Hello and welcome to the Doof Book Club, our monthly live stream discussion of a book chosen by you, our listeners. My name is Matt Freeman and I'm joined as always by my friendly and rather inquisitive new neighbor, Scott. How's it going, Scott? Pretty good. I, I was going to think about doing an Irish accent there and then I, uh, I I decided against it. So I think I made the right call there. Yeah, I remember that one, one ton of French book club we did where I tried to do the reading sections with an Irish accent. That was fun. I do. I will never forget that for the rest of my life. I will die thinking about that moment where you tried to do an Irish accent. Yeah. So I'm going to do that again this time. Just, oh, good. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome. Happy Friday. Hope you are doing very well. Happy March. It's March now. Yeah, uh, how, how did that happen? Feels yeah. like February is a shorter month. I don't know. It just feels that way. It's a bad, it's a bad joke. Uh, <laughs> Hope you're doing great. Uh, we see some names we already recognize in the chat. I see John. I see Mike. Uh, if you are hanging out in the chat, please say hello. If you are here for the very first time, if you were just wandering the YouTube on a Friday night like so many of us do and stumbled across this this here stream, hello. Uh, we are Doof Media and we make podcasts all about the stories we love. We also arrange and organize this here monthly digital book club, which is just like a, a, a normal book club, except without any smells yeah and in a normal book club everybody sits around and only two people are allowed to talk that's true that's true just two just two (laughs) (laughs) yes sunny we are much happier today yeah yeah that was a that was a rough it was a rough conversation i loved that movie uh but very difficult very difficult um matt what is a what is a book club just in case people don't know well each month scott and i select five books from a pool submitted to us by our wonderful doof community we put up a poll for all of our supporters over on patreon.com slash doof media and we let them vote on which they'd like us to talk about the book with the most votes wins and then we all read it and then we meet here on the usually last Friday, but lately first Friday of the month, spend an hour or so chatting all about the book. Uh, But before we get into the book, you know, Matt just talked about we have this whole voting process. It's very democratic. It's very equitable. It's it's all it's all good. Yeah, except twice a year, Uh, twice a year uh, is when Matt and I uh, seize control of the show, take it over, throw democracy to the wind. And uh, and become the consuls of the Doof Empire and just yeah. decide what book we want to read. So March is one of those two months every year that we do this. And so uh, there was not a poll on our Patreon this week and there will not be a poll here on this book because we've already picked it. I've already picked the book and we'll reveal that at the end of the show. So, yeah, I mean, it's almost like the democracy that we usually have is just a kind of pretense. I think that's incredibly accurate. Um, anyway, you know. All right, Matt, what book did we read this month? This week, month, we read The Searcher by Tana French. Uh, and the summary of The Searcher is as follows. Retired detective Cal Hooper moves to a remote village in rural Ireland. His plans are to fix up the dilapidated cottage he's bought, to walk the mountains, to put his old police instincts to bed forever. Then a local boy appeals to him for help. His brother is missing and no one in the village, least of all the police, seems to care. And once again, Cal feels that restless itch. Something is wrong in the community, and he must find out what, even if it brings trouble to his door. You know, we've had a lot of mixed book summaries that we pull shamelessly from other websites. That was solid. That was a solid one. It was short. It was to the point. It really gives you the hook of the story. I'm, I'm into it. Me too. I agree. All right, Matt, what did you think of The Searcher? And and while Matt is giving his answer, I want you folks in the chat to let me know what what uh, what you thought of it. I mean, it it was exactly the, the Tana medicine that I that I always need and want. Um, it drew me in plot wise. Uh, I fell in love with the characters. I was super invested invested in it. I got the, you know I I I started it a little bit late in the month, but I finished it within just a few days because I just, you know, couldn't stop. It, 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 uh, it wound me around its finger, um, which is what always happens with Tana books. Um, it, it, it felt quite different from the Dublin Murder Squad books in, in a few ways, um, which I think we'll, we'll probably just go into in, in, in a kind of a free, free range conversation type fashion because I don't think I can summarize it, but, um, and that's that's not to say I was disappointed at all. It just it, it felt it felt different. It was not the standard Dublin Murder Squad story package, and that's yeah. that's fine. I'm kind of glad that she's exploring other other uh, 
shapes of story. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with all that. I think the the general sentiment in the chat seems to be uh, that most people enjoyed this book. We I, a lot of uh, this was my first Tana French book, which makes me very happy. This is actually uh, for those that don't know, this is the third ton of French book we've covered on the book club. Um, we did our very first one was one of our first books ever, which was a uh, secret place. Then we did the likeness and, uh, and then we took a break from Tana for a long time. Uh, well, at least the book club took a break from Tana. Me, I <laughs> read every single one of her books, some of them multiple times since then. Um, and, and you actually, I think maybe this is a thing we might, might should do. You ha- had a history prior to book club with Tana French. Uh, yeah. That we should remind people of if they haven't been around since the beginning of our book club. Yeah, just I, I guess briefly, like I read the the Secret Place was the first one I read, which we did, have not read in the, on the book club, and it I found it so emotionally you're devastating. Of Into the Woods, I think, is the name of the one you're talking about. Oh, uh, you're right. In, in, in the Woods, yeah, I, yeah. I, I just totally said the wrong thing. Uh, in the Woods was the one that I read. Yeah. And it was just so emotionally like impactful and devastating to me that I didn't read any more Tana books because I was like, I, n- not like I didn't like this, but like I can't live my life this way where I'm like <laughs> emotionally reeling from the book that I happened to be reading at the time. Um, and then, and, and I'm glad I got back to it. And I you know th- there were some specific things about that book that just made it hit harder. So it's not that these other books don't also hit hard, but I, I can, I can handle these. Um, so uh, and, and we've loved every book we've covered. And I've actually not read all of her books. And the reason is less to do with me being like afraid of them and more that I'm just trying to space them out so that I um, can can just enjoy them in, in a in a leisurely fashion. Um, yeah, that would be the sensible thing to do. Uh, I, of course, did not do that. Um, I, you know, we, we did the the secret place for book club and then i proceeded to read every single one (laughs) from there over the course of maybe like four months like i really just tore through (laughs) every book she had written up until that point and 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 she's released two books since then and i've read both of them and there's a new one coming out uh in four days um and and i i love i love tana french i really do i think you know we're we're gonna get into this in, in a lot of detail in this episode but the way she writes you know these this this kind of beautiful flowery and i have to sneeze sorry (laughs) prose (laughs) prose thank you (laughs) the sneeze went away um beautiful flowery prose and then also like the way she writes the the detecting the 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 the, you know down to earth beat to beat detective work that these detectives do it is just infinitely uh alluring for me like i just i can't get enough of it and i you know this was honestly this was the second time i read this book because like i said I've, I've read every book and and i was i was a little curious if if this one was not going to work on me as well the second time having having known and having very clear memories of what the the reveal at the end of this book is um but it did it, it still did like everything everything works works on me um and, and i think you're right this is this is different from the Dublin murder squad series, you know, those, those are a series of books all about, you know, Dublin murder detectives. Um, and and the way Tana kind of structures that series for those that don't know is, you know, there's a a detective is the main character of each one. And then the way it's kind of worked is their partner ends up being the main character of the next one. Um, and that's kind of the way it's gone through. I think there are five of them. Uh, and then she kind of went away from that, which was which was interesting because they were all technically sequels of each other, but then technically separate cases that really didn't uh, did, you, like we read The Secret Place first, which was like the third or fourth one written. And then we went back and read The Likeness, which was the second one written. Um, so it, it, it doesn't it's not a series that you technically have to read in order that requires that level of of um, knowledge of everything. I think it, they work fine as a standalone. Yeah. I agree. I mean, I read the, yeah, I read them all out of order and then I, mm-hmm. I've, I've loved all of them. And I mean, it barely matters. They're not, they're not connected in a way that's super plot relevant, except in a couple of places that, yeah. Um, it's not that important. Yeah. But this, this, this is, um, uh, it, it, so, so an interesting comment in the chat that like some, uh, 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 one of our, our, our uh, readers experiences that they, they really enjoy just kind of hanging out with Cal before any of the murder mystery stuff even started. Um, I think that's a great way of expressing how this book feels different because the Dublin murder books are usually very intense. They usually 
you know, get us into the, the thick of, of the murder and the, you know, some deeply screwed up situation quite quickly. And this one, we, we were, we're just chilling with Cal as he's hanging out at his, at his house and really, you know, no, nothing's wrong. Nothing's wrong. Right. <laughs> uh, and, and it sets, it sets a different pace. It sets a different tone for the book, which um, really influences, I think the book overall. Yeah, nothing's wrong, but also something is wrong because something's wrong with Cal. You know, like I, I think the yeah. thing I love so much about what Tana does is 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 really the thing that all kind of murder stories are supposed to do, or or of a certain variety of that the there's there's a there's a, a murder mystery going on. There's that mystery, and then there's something going on with the character, and these two things, you know become intertwined with each other as the story goes along. And this is different. You know, this is not something that Agatha Christie and those type of the Poirot mystery stories did. You know, those were like the, the, where, where the, <laughs> the detective is not actually a character in the story. They're just like a, a vehicle for getting the mystery across, but that's not how Tana French writes mystery. Um, the, the, the way she writes mystery is, is these are primarily stories about the detective. And then the mystery is, is almost, but not quite secondary it matters in that the the resolution of the mystery is is usually also the resolution of the character's arc as it was so beautifully done in my opinion in in this book um and i and i really i really dig that i really do and i think she does it masterfully and and i think it's really cool here you know the big difference here is a, a lot of these books talk about life in modern ireland like that is you know you know we have these detectives and the things they're struggling with and the things that are happening and the murders that are happening is is a lot of you know cultural snapshots of life in ireland in in modern times and this is different because here we have an outsider to that tana is writing still about modern ireland and 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 a portion of of this world but from the perspective of an outsider and i thought that was really really cool yeah yeah I, I, that's true i mean i it's funny. I think we revealed this shocking truth at a previous episode that Tana is American. Um, <laughs> yeah, and and so I, I gotta think there's a little bit of the, of the idea that you're writing about Ireland from the perspective of an outsider, like you said, and writing mm -hmm. about a character who is a, an outsider, um, who will never be an insider, even though maybe he gets invited to the pub and he befriends the locals and they think he's cool and everything. He'll never really be an insider. He'll never be one of them. Um, I, I was thinking about that as I was reading it, actually, like this mm -hmm. is, uh, 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 the, the, the character being an American in Ireland made things feel different than I think the previous books where the character was generally, um, a, a native, um, Irish person or, mm -hmm. or at least someone from the British Isles, as far as I can recall. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I mean, there's a lot about in these books about the the contentious relationship between Ireland and and the the, the United Kingdom and yeah, and yeah. like how that informs how people behave and and react and and all these things and and there's a little of that here too. I mean, there's definitely like you know this is a, a, a small rural town in Ireland and how the you know the the, the conceit of the story the reveal of the story is all about you know trying to retain something that is slowly being whittled away and and destroyed um yeah we're getting a lot of comments in the chat and i think this is a, a pretty great place to to take the conversation yeah is cal and cal's perceived dumbness um because because he is like and, and i think the way tana writes this character is actually very clever because i think he's he's very smart um, he's, he's very perceptive. He's very smart. Like the, my, one of my favorite things about how Tana writes is when she's writing the detective interview scene and, and the way she writes that scene, we talked about this a lot in the secret place so back when we were pulling samples from the text and actually reading through it. Um, like the way she'll write a dialogue scene where like, she won't necessarily come right out and say it, but like. You can see what the detective is doing and his strategy and his technique for how to pull information out of people. And like just the way like the way Cal like clocks certain things and then repeats it to us, like like the way he's he's interviewing Brendan's friends and they're all speaking in present tense and he's clocking that. Yeah. Um, it, it's all it's all just like very 
very like sharp and and this is something that like if once you read another ton of french books folks you'll see that like that this is one of her great strengths is being able to write those interview sequences that are just so engrossing and entertaining because it makes you feel like you're being a detective too it like it it, it drags you along just enough to where like you're picking up on the stuff and then you feel clever and that feels fun because you're like ah i see what you're doing i get this oh i'm i'm clocking that and i might not be like writing it down and trying to solve the mystery myself but i feel like I could be and that is really fun really yeah. fun so so it's interesting because I, I I agree with all that that's that's a lot of the fun of detective novels in general but especially Tana is is the fun of the 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 um mind games I guess broadly speaking it's interesting because a couple of comments in in the chat have have said well but but Cal is also kind of dumb at the same time <laughs> and and what I so so and I wanted to talk about this anyway because the one unusual thing, the, the most unusual thing about this book from the perspective of being a murder story is that you're ahead of Cal, mm-hmm. uh, or at least I was. And I'm not saying I'm some kind of genius. I, I think Tom wanted, uh, uh, I think Tana wanted us to be ahead of Cal. I think Tana, Tana intends for the reader to be like, okay, obviously Mart is involved in this in some important way. <laughs> obviously Mart is super, super involved in this way more than and, and the fact is it's way more than cal wants to believe like cal doesn't want and, and that's the thing that that's what i think is going on with this story is cal really doesn't want to believe that this lovely man who's his neighbor who's sort of part of this second chance at at, at life that he's trying to to embark upon um kind of his best friend really yeah uh in in this new life is part of this thing he 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 doesn't want to see it and he doesn't see it. And I don't think that's being dumb. I think that's just just not wanting it to be true, basically. Yeah. Well, and, and the big the big kind of, I don't know, reveal moment, but like the the other evidence towards Cal being dumb is when he talks about the end of his marriage mm-hmm. um, and mm-hmm. he talks about. You know, you know, this this big event that happened is his his, his daughter was mugged and they, they flew out there to be with her and instead of being there and comforting her, he turned cop mode on and went and solved the crime. And then his wife resents him for that. And he's basically just like, I don't get this. Why is she so mad? I still don't know why she wrote. She, she left me. I still don't understand. Like, and it's like from the reader perspective, you're like, you fucking idiot. Like you idiot. Like, how do you not, how do you not get this? Like what your daughter needed in that moment was her father. She did not need uh, a, a, a police detective to solve the crime. And that is, of course, the, the, Tana beautifully brings that situation around again, you know, in this book where where um, Trey has been beaten, is traumatized, and Cal wants to go out and take care of it and solve it. And he's mm-hmm. forced by Lena and and perhaps by the cha- his changing nature to stay this time and to just sit in her room with her and to be with her. And, and that, you know, is this beautiful, beautiful payoff. But yeah, like that comes off as dumb when you're like, how do you not realize why everyone's so upset with you? How do you not re- like it just seems from the reader's perspective so obvious why. Yeah. Your wife is pissed off at you right. for this, and yeah. and the, this was this was only like the final straw in probably a career of you doing the cop thing, which which as people have pointed out is like he's a very tropey standard cop character, right? He's the the grizzled like no nonsense, you know the the job is everything kind of cop, um, and, and yet and yet he does feel fresh and new and and exciting. Yeah, well, it's it's because I think he's drawn as a as a human like and that, mm-hmm. that's what i like about tana is another of the many things i like i like about tana is she takes a lot of the detective tropes that exist in in all detective literature and she's like okay but what if i did this correctly uh, <laughs> and and so yeah he he is this grizzled um you know uh hard-boiled uh, uh cop but you know he's three-dimensional he had this youth where he like you know did drugs and committed crimes and then settled down because he fell in love with his wife and then they had a kid and then he and then he kind of took that energy and turned it toward like being a a, a, a sort of a a problem solver kind of personality Mm -hmm. where he's like he's he's going to he's going to solve the problem he's going to solve the case um he's not really a detective actually as far as i recall he's he's a he's a cop who did a bunch of different things over his career and and he has good cop instincts, but he's he doesn't have quite the same mind 
as our as our murder squad detectives who are all you know they they have a different kind of angle to them he has he has more of a he's he's kind of more confrontational and also the fact that he's not actually officially a cop and that he's just you know a vigilante uh, (laughs) makes things more fun in that way too yeah um where Uh, you never quite know what he's gonna do i do think that's part of the reason why the mart stuff just went by him you know i think Mm -hmm. he's trying very hard to turn that part of himself off you know like he 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 puts in his early retirement papers because his wife like in his in his mind which i I love the way tana writes this as just this this really this really thick level of confusion where she i don't know she said something about how she was mad at me for doing that and then like that the job was more important so i i i I did all my paperwork and i retired and then but then she was already dating someone else and like, I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand. Like she writes it like that. And then, you know, so I think that this guy, as we find him here in Ireland, like he really is, is running as far away from that life as he possibly can. And so he's, he's almost intentionally turning those parts of his brain off. And it isn't until Trey comes and it isn't until Trey like reactivates the the itch to find out the itch to know the itch to solve that those pieces of his brain start clicking back on so i think in my opinion it is completely believable that like yes mart from the get-go is just like man this guy keeps hanging around and like asking pointed questions and nothing like like he even is smart enough to realize that mart is warning him off from something in the the bar scene but not that it's something that he's involved in he's just like i don't know he's probably just trying to look out for me and it's like no (laughs) he's he's clearly part of this man like he's just he's he's intentionally trying not to to be that person anymore and and that's why he wants he wants it to be some some simple story where it's these gangsters from out of town and he can he can preserve his fantasy of retiring in this idyllic village and um you know, I, I, it's funny. I was, I was joking with you earlier this, this month about like t- time, time to take a break from reading about, um, the darkness that lurks at the heart of small secluded towns, uh, and read some ton of French. Um, and, and then we get this and, and, and also, by the way, time to take a break from reading about a guy who goes to a faraway place to, to start <laughs> his, his second life, um, and read some ton of French. Um, the, the yeah. joke is that these are things that are happening in the Stephen King book we're reading at, uh, at the same time. Um, I don't remember if I said this on air earlier this week, but like I was reading both of these books simultaneously, <laughs> you know, like I would like, I was trying to keep up to make sure I finished this in time for book club. So I'd read like 50 pages and be like, Oh, I really need to read my Duma key section to be able to prepare the podcast in time for that. And just like the, the whiplash, like I've never quite felt the whiplash of going back and forth between two books as much as, it, these two uh-huh. because yeah you open the book and you're in the head of a character who has just moved to a new place and is surrounded by the locals of that new place and there's this this air of mystery going on and it's just like wait is this the one with the <laughs> painting or or the little girl wait uh-huh. hold on oh wait no they both have little girl hold on <laughs> <laughs> and it was just really disorienting oh god yeah um but but yeah like, and also the thing you know i i think the thing about all the Dublin Murder Squad detectives is that they're incredibly paranoid and suspicious people. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I, I feel like Stephen Moran would have immediately been like, it's this guy. It's definitely yeah. this guy. Whereas, you know, the, this character, he's 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 not an idiot. He's just he's just a more trusting kind of guy. He just wants to relax. He wants to turn off that part of his brain, like you said. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I think one one another unique thing of this is that we... Like the Dublin as it's it's murder squad, as its name implies, there's a murder usually is the inciting incident of the story. Right. We don't know Brendan is for sure murdered until pretty late into this this story. This starts as a a missing persons where we're just trying to figure out where someone went. And I think, you know, you and I with our ton of French knowledge probably just immediately went like, oh, he's he did. Um, Mm. And most people probably did, too. But like it's still it's still like structured differently where you you don't start the story with a corpse and then you're trying to solve the mystery of the corpse there's there's a missing person and then and then we eventually lead to oh he's he's dead um and yeah. that's tr- that structures that structures a little differently and it structures how perhaps the detectives react to it and then the early interviews they have with the the, the other characters yeah absolutely i mean <sighs> 
it, it says it's it allows this story to talk about very different things too because yeah like like you said the fact that the kid is missing he's not even like officially missing he's just like yeah. eh, he just ran off and everybody's like well w- do you know where he is no do you know anyone who knows where he is no but he just re- you know he he's from that bad stock his father was a was a rascal and and it's It'll it and so the book is saying all all of these things about the way that that a uh, a community can can um what's the word uh, outcast or or um yeah uh, ostracize ostracize uh, like a a whole family basically because because one you know one member of the family is a wastrel and then and now you have this sort of generational um um. Uh, sickness that that the the community has created in this family where uh it, it's it's it, what, I'm, what i'm trying to say is that like the community is responsible for the family having the struggles that it does because they they expect nothing of these kids and they're so overtly prejudiced toward them and you know the, then basically the kid tries to do something dramatic to try to kind of escape the trap and then they kill him for it um, mm-hmm. not, not cold bloodedly, but ultimately that is what happens. Um, and, and you see, you see his sister going down the same path. So yeah, it, it's a very, it's very different themes really than your typical, um, I was going to say the typical Dublin murder book, although they all have different kind of themes, but what I mean is it has very specific themes that have to do with the community this time. Yeah. And I mean, I think it is true that all these books, you know, are are taking a different slice of of Irish life and and inspecting it and and ringing it for themes and purpose and 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 inspecting you know the the trials and tribulations of being a, a person that lives in this world um and and yeah I mean this this interesting idea presented in this book of this this very very tiny you know rural town that is dying like that is you know I I think the thing they said is is most of the young people are going away and you know no there's no there's no kids around anymore really because no one's staying and having kids and so this community is is aging and dying and what's going to happen to it and it, like the thing about what mart and his people did is it was awful but like you understand their like innate desire to keep this place going and to not let because like like what what brendan wanted to do was uh, bring meth into the community to, uh-huh. to, to to start a meth lab and and you know bring a horrible horrible destructive drug into this place that 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 would have had deep deep consequences for this place and for you know the the greater community as a whole like that's bad <laughs> that's yeah. not that's not good and and um the 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 community like it, it is this this interesting image of this community that's so small and insular and and like that like you just have these these grudges that go on forever and these ridiculous hatreds and everyone knows everything you do at all times and 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 like but you understand why some of these people would want to preserve this thing yeah it's true I, speaking of the meth thing i enjoyed how tana never explains anything she just shows cal going through the little cottage and looking at all the stuff mm-hmm. and just telling you what he's seeing. And you're like, Oh, he's building a meth lab because yeah. everyone nowadays you've all seen breaking bad because <laughs> you've seen breaking bad. Yeah. Tana just assumes everyone's seen breaking bad. And mm-hmm. then, and then basically it's not that she never says it out loud, but she takes so long to say it out loud that I think she's really counting on you to just figure it out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which is fun. And, and yeah, I mean, it is kind of like it is this completely believable thing that you would think a kid like this saw this as his big break and is like, yeah, I'm good in chemistry. I could probably do this, too, which I, I, I will. I, I feel like he would have just blown up the 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 house. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't have a I don't have a lot of confidence in, in Brandon. Uh, right. Is it ready? Is it ready? Is how like ready? Is, yeah. Okay. How's it okay. spelled? R e d d y. Yeah, ready. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, he's well. He's really good at high school chemistry, Scott. I'm sure he can. <laughs> I'm sure, he can Walter White this situation right yeah, up. Anyone can do that. I mean, that's like that. But even that's like this relatable thing of this this down on his luck kid that's just like so <laughs> desperate to like to to do something to fix his situation that like you can believe he would get in his head that I could, I could do this. And and that's the one thing this book I think does very, very well is Brendan is not in this book. Like Brendan is dead. 
from the from page one of this book, he's dead and gone. And yet the way we we fill the space around him with the things people say about him and the work that Cal's doing, like he feels like a fully fleshed out real character to the point where like the the the, the oh he's going to do a meth lab like is in line with what we've been told about his character like we're just oh yeah that makes sense he's kind of rash he, he, yeah. he kind of thinks get, gets in over his head and doesn't doesn't really think out the consequences of everything tana has laid the groundwork and seeds for that so where when it happens you're you're just like oh i get it and like it, it, it didn't need to do that because he's not really a character but of course he also is a character yeah he's he's irish jesse pinkman um <laughs> Yeah, that's that's a good point. I like I, I, I agree that um that was part of what made us want Brendan to be alive is is we felt like we were getting yeah. to know him and the more we the more little details we got about this kid, the more we were like, Oh, I really don't want him to be dead. Mm-hmm. Um to to the extent where I was like, Maybe he won't be. Like, because I definitely well, like you said, I was I was like, Ah, he's he's dead um from the beginning. But then mm-hmm. at a certain point toward the middle, I was like well, it'd be it'd be an unexpected twist if he wasn't. That would be that'd be kind of cool. And then and then it was like no. But um, uh, 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 Mike in the chat is pointing out the the the, the bar scenes, you know, Ugh. and speak, you know, in context of other Tana novels, I can't think of anything quite like these bar scenes where uh, it's a it's a dialogue scene involving like a bunch of people, and it and it works so well. Like it's really hard to do those and easy to screw them up the the dialogue scenes involving a bunch of people um but it really it, it made it made me feel like yeah this is this is what it's like ha- hanging out at the bar people are tar- talking over each other going off on tangents shouting matches and then people just laugh it off and um a lot of a lot of my favorite moments of the book actually happen in these scenes where he'd just go to the bar and they'd get wasted um and but but also you know and, and there there'd be a lot of humor there but then there would also be a lot of um very subtle communication happening in, via subtext that's the that's the deafness with which i think she writes these stories mm-hmm. a, that i just can't get enough of is is yeah like you could read it on the surface level read of just like we're we're seeing a window into this fascinating community where you know a, 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 like people will get furious with each other at one minute and then just be fine the next minute. And like Cal is like, jug- like struggling to stay up to, to keep up with it all. But yeah, there is this, this through line of tension of he is an outsider of there. They, they're like speaking to him warmly and welcomingly, but there's a tinge of, the, of, of, you know, trying to get information from him. It's like, it's like you really get the feeling that the, the second he decided to start, investigating brendan everyone in town knew about it and like no one is going to say anything and they're just feeling each other out and they're 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 like no one is direct no one approaches him directly about the stuff they're just like asking questions and telling stories very very pointed specific stories about people um that 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 couldn't hack it as like a hey hint yeah hint (laughs) um yeah it's just it's just like it's really remarkable writing because yeah it's a type of thing where everyone reading this it's obvious too but it feels like i like books that make you feel like you're smart even if even if you're not really doing anything smart because the book is doing all the work for you actually it's just it's just disguising the work it's doing for you and i think that's what she does really well and especially in those bar scenes is like it's very very obvious but you still feel like you're picking up on all this subtle stuff and it makes you feel intelligent it makes you feel like a detective a little bit and it's fun yeah, I mean, I I think like you said, one could just have their brain turned off and read these conversations and these stories being told as just like, oh, he's telling an amusing story. Yeah, and and you really do have to. I I wouldn't go so far as to say you have to have experience with Tana, but you do have to be paying attention to be like, there's a there's a double meaning to to everything that's being said um, by everyone, um, especially Mart. But I I think I think even other sort of tangential people are 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 part of this web of of sub communication that's going on. I think one of my mm-hmm. favorite moments, I forget the exact context. You'll probably remember what I'm talking about though, was when uh, like a, a, one of the guys in the bar kind of, kind of is, is physically aggressive or, or sort of threatening toward, um, toward our, our main character. 
and 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 Cal is immediately in in, in his head from his point of view. The thought process is is immediately like. Okay, I, he's like, I stood up. If I took him down first, qu- quickly, the other two wouldn't get involved. Maybe the one on the left would. And, and he just like breaks it down into like, I'm going to have to kick these guys' asses. And like, you can, j- and, and like everyone's like silent. And then, and then they're like, ah, oh, and, then, and then they like laugh it off. <laughs> but it's great because yeah. it's this moment where like the, the, su- the again, the sub communication there is like, okay, we're not going to be able to intimidate him. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like they, like they, they sort of tried to, to intimidate him and then he made it clear that he would kick kick anyone's ass who came <laughs> at him and they're like we're gonna we're gonna have to try something different but that's, that's that kind of stuff which is constantly happening yeah um, yeah it, it's all about people feeling each other out while trying to disguise you know the the the, the true goings on like i love the 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 mystery of the butchered sheep i think was just just this perfect little thing that like is is <laughs> You know, it's like it's the classic detective story thing of like, it's all the same case, right? You know, Mm -hmm. it's all part of the same thing, but you really don't understand how. And like the way Mart, it's just, you know, Mart's lying. And and Cal even kind of knows Mart's lying when he's like, oh, well, how did you know that that it would be PJ's farm next? He's like, oh, it just, you know, seemed like the one. Uh (laughs) It's just like, that doesn't make any sense, man. You're not making any sense. Um, But but yet, like he's not really investigating it because he's trying not to. And, and it, it, it's just this, this, this fantastic through line of implication as John is saying, like yeah. everything, everything is just done by implication. And, and, and Tana rarely spells out the implications for you. Yeah, you're, you're totally right. I, I think I got a, a ridiculous amount of enjoyment from the fact that the book sort of wants you to think that maybe there is some kind of supernatural night creature killing the sheep. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, for it's for aliens. a minute, especially when when he sees the 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 kid. Well, I mean, he describes it as like it could have been like a like a like a wild dog, but it could have been a person like hunched and, and shambling, mm-hmm. or it could have been some kind of creature. It was hard to tell. And you're yeah. like, are we gonna have a? Is there gonna be a creature in this book? Turns um, out it was just Donnie. It was just Donnie. <laughs> I mean, that is true, especially if you're coming into this with knowledge of Tana, because there are two books in which she has gestured towards the supernatural. The Secret Place, the first one we read, actually, is is a book where there is some confirmed supernatural elements to it. It's not like it's not the the main thrust of the plot, as it turns out. Um, And it's it's more working as supernatural as metaphor for like the bonds and strengths of a a female friendship in, in youth. But it, it is there, right? It is there. And so yeah. you're like, how far is she willing to push this? How far is she willing to go to explore these ideas and these themes? Um, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, mean, I thought it, certainly possible. I think I think there's a touch of it in all in all three of the books I've read. It, but, mm-hmm. but like you yeah. said, so so subtle that it could just be practically not there. Um, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> um, we haven't talked about Trey very much. And yeah. and I, I really I really liked Trey. I think the the reveal of, of Trey is actually a girl, I think is this, this big thing that, you know, I remembered from my first read and, and, and love to death. And I got to like spend some time thinking about it this time of like, well, why did we do it that way? Right. Like, uh-huh. and, and I think it is because just, just the simple fact that if he knew Trey was a girl from the beginning, like he says, he says outright, like I never would have invited her into my house. Like I wouldn't have done that. And it's like, yes, but also, your problems with your daughter and and the the strained relationship you have with your daughter are because you treat your daughter like she's this fragile little girl yeah um and not and like so like a- allowing Trey to like cu- get under his skin as a boy that he's just going to treat like you know oh well, he's just one of the men that we can all teach him to hunt and we'll fix things yeah. and and uh like it is just this brilliant way of like sneaking in to to a situation in which he never would have allowed himself to be put in not just for the perception publicly but also for like just the way he treats you know the the way in his old grizzled stereotypical detective thing he's going to treat women as these these fragile little creatures that need protecting um it, it really i i loved it i loved it and yeah trey as a character is like some of my favorite parts of this book like she's great she's really great like you immediately fall in love with her and yeah. just like the way we're introduced to her as this very, very skittish, um, but also like 
sneaky and smart like just like and, and the way that she's and, and him are playing this kind of cat and mouse game of where she's slowly approaching to spy and and like he, he, by the way he never really like asks about how everyone knows he's a cop uh -huh. <laughs> like he doesn't really ever investigate that fact that everyone just seems to know he's a cop actually yeah uh, it's you can't have any secrets there's no secrets in this in this place yeah, right yeah yeah um yeah, I, I love Trey. I mean, th there's there's something super lovable about these like forthright characters who I mean, I, it, it's it's interesting because like you said, she is incredibly skittish and standoffish, but also she's incredibly forthright and honest and like brave um, and proactive. Right. I mean, I think that's the that, that's kind of the, the, the fun thing about the story is he, he is a he, he is the um, re reluctant hero archetype. Uh, doesn't want to be the hero, doesn't want to get involved, um, not an active protagonist for the first part of the story, at least, until he becomes involved and then he becomes active. But Trey is the one motivating the plot um, mm -hmm. and and creating all of the situations that he has to react to. I, I Part of me wonders if at some point, like, it, or, or maybe if the story didn't start out as like a story about Trey from Trey's perspective, um, I, I think this works better than that would have because we kind of get to unspool the, the understanding of the situation and we get to have an objective viewpoint yeah. on the situation. Um, but in, in some regards, Trey is like the focal character. It's, it's funny. We, <laughs> I mean, maybe I'm just saying that because we're, we're having a similar conversation on, on our other podcast, but I, I'm, I'm thinking about that, the, the, the book over there, Duma Key and how sometimes it feels like, the purpose of the protagonist is to be an observer of the secondary character who's who's, <laughs> who's really interesting. This isn't to say that Cal is not an interesting character. Obviously, it's just uh, Trey is is sort of so um, vivid and and active that um, uh, she captures your attention. Yeah, I mean, she's the she immediately takes takes over the second she's introduced into a scene. Always, yeah. um, I, I like what John said. It's twenty twenty Google. That's how they figured out he was a cop. Yeah, I mean, true, fair. But I, I, what I like to think actually is that he thinks he's being so clever and different, but he's just like walking around town, like just acting so coppish uh -huh. that everyone's just immediately like, oh, yeah, that's a, right. he's a, definitely a cop, like totally yeah. a cop. Well, uh, well uh, and, uh, this ties into that, but also is just funny that like the first thing he does when he when he gets there is he's like, so I need to get a gun. Where can I get a gun? <laughs> And they're like Americans, yeah, Americans yeah. in your guns. <laughs> but I also think, like, I did notice something about that. Like when he when he originally decides to help out Trey, and he starts interviewing people. Um, you know, he he like he's very very good at like coming up with the initial excuse for why to start asking these questions. But like as soon as he crosses that line, he just falls into detective interview mode, and he's just like it. it, it like I said, some of my favorite parts of the book, but it is just so very clearly. Oh, I'm just being interviewed right yeah. now. Like it's just like he's just he just falls back into it. And again, this isn't something that the book itself literally remarks on, but it just. It, it just is like the way he talks to them, the way he poses the questions, the way he responds to their answers. He's just a cop interviewing suspects. Yeah. Um, yeah I like Heller's response. I have a beard. They'll never guess I'm a cop, which is basically what he did. He's like, <laughs> no, I grew, I grew my facial hair out. No one's ever going to yeah. suspect it's the, the Superman uh, glasses uh, yeah. technique. That's incredible. No, I, I, yeah, I mean, it's, it's funny cause you're, you're totally right that he's good at having an excuse. He's like, oh yeah, I need to, uh, get a gift for a niece. Anyway, I have 14 questions for you. <laughs> yeah. And then, I mean, it is part of the fun of it. Like w one of the things that in these, you know, we talked about how much I love the, the interview scenes. One of the things that's cool about those scenes is that Cal is very, very good at clocking what type of person this is right away and knowing which questions will motivate them in different ways. And and the fun part about that scene with the the former girlfriend in the shop is that he's like, Oh, this chick's no nonsense. Like the only way I'm going to get questions is just being a hundred percent straight with her. So he's basically just like, yeah, I'm investigating uh, Brandon's disappearance. Uh, it's, he just drops all pretenses. And then, you know, like immediately the whole town's going to know that it's yeah. like everyone's, Everyone's going to tell everyone everything, but like, yeah. and, I, and I do love when he stops caring about that though. Like at the, at the end, he's just fed up when he goes to Donnie's, uh -huh. he just doesn't give a shit anymore. 
Um, yeah. It's really great. Right. That was another great thing about him not actually being a cop is that he can just beat the shit out of Donnie. And <laughs> and it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's fine. It's just... Well, uh, and, and then Mark gets to turn that on his head, right? Where he's like, he's chastising Mark for the murder of Brendan, right? Um, uh-huh. And then, and is like, you know, it was just a thing, you know, we didn't mean to kill him, obviously. It was just a th- to protect our town, to protect our people. This was a thing we thought needed doing. And is like, that's what you thought when you went and broke Donnie's finger and beat the shit out of him, right? It was just a thing that needed doing. And it's like, oh, yeah, uh-huh. fuck. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, I, I think... It does make you understand a little bit, although you all, yeah. I, I also don't think you forgive because you're no, like, well, certainly not. Yeah, yeah. Well, the reason why, um, the kid had, the kid felt like he had to do that in the first place was because this town yeah, was, was so turned against him. So yeah. like, did, did you think that needed to be done? Did you think you needed to treat that family like shit for, for the children's entire life because their father was a deadbeat? Mm-hmm. Like that that clearly wasn't the right thing to do so it's not like you can now justify this and be like well he you know he was going to bring something bad into our town it's like well you created this this is yeah. this yeah. is the town's fault um yep. brandon is just a symptom of of what you guys are doing here the, the yeah. thing that you're trying to create and and desperately control um yeah yeah it, <laughs> uh, mike is also mentioning that the fact that he would use the idea of like um uh, yeah, I need somebody to do the wiring in my in my house. I heard there's this like 17 year old who's really good with wiring, <laughs> and I'm and, and I only want this one kid, and I'm going to talk to everyone in the town about this. Which it, like at, I think by the time you're you're there in the book, it's like look, everybody knows this is a pretense anyway, mm-hmm. and that's and that's fine. He just needs there to be a pretense to start the conversation and, um, and mart sees right through it immediately and and because we suspect mart almost immediately you can tell when mart's just like hey why don't you just ask me yeah because <laughs> that would have been the most logical thing oh well you know i was at the pub and i heard a couple people talking about how brendan did some electric work one uh-huh. time so i thought yeah this guy can rewire my entire house i didn't go to my neighbor and just be like hey do you know any electricians right yeah, you definitely want your your house wiring done by a teenager who's <laughs> who's allegedly done some wiring work before. And then and then you go to his friends and be like, "Hey, you're friends with this guy. You probably know how to do electric wiring too, right?" No. I I feel sure that Brendan never knew how to do wiring in mm-hmm. the first place. That's yeah, okay. probably probably not. Although he was going to do meth, so you know. You he, gotta, was, he was gonna do math. Yeah, it's gonna be some blue ice or whatever it was called. Gonna, yeah, I forget. Yeah, I so I, we've been very kind of cavalier and jokey about this, but I, you know the 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 conclusion of the book when Cal walks up um, into the the mountain and you know un- unearths Brendan's body, like that messed me up man mm-hmm. like that really that really like this is this is what i mean is tana can do this very specific very kind of hard-boiled detail-oriented detective interview shit and then she can like switch gears and just write something like so incredibly beautiful and profound um yeah. of the of this this cop who's on the job for years wrestling with the moral choice that he's presented with here is like these people murdered this kid and do I bring them to justice? Is that does that do anything? Does that solve anything? Does that help anything? And so I'm forced to kind of conclude that no, I'm just going to have to like when he has to put the sod back over his face. It it is it's so awful. This is a kid. This is just a, a little kid. I mean, 17, but still like that yeah. was fucked from from the start because of yeah. circumstance, because of this town, because of this place, and. Yeah, it's oh, it's the, awful. There was something just genius about the idea that you know he was buried in a bog, and so when yeah. when he digs him up, despite the fact that it's been so long, he's he's preserved, right? Yeah. But um, uh, yeah, but then like v- the, the sort of visceral disgust of realizing that like well his his skin is preserved, but he's sort of decomposing on the inside. Yeah. And, 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 uh, yeah, just, and, and I, I th- there was so much great about that scene where like he, he actually verifies what Mart told him. Like mm-hmm. he, he checks for the, for the wounds because he's like, you know, he, he doesn't quite know what he's going to do yet. Like if, if he finds out that Mart lied to him about how the kid died, he might very well be like, all right, 
fuck this. This guy, yeah. th- this th- that's not what happened. I'm still being lied to. It's probably something worse happened, but he, he kind of doesn't get that out. Um, yeah. And so it's it's very interesting how it's it's almost a kind of character growth that he decides to let them get away with murder. <laughs> not it not, is not, it, kind of right because it's like it's him it's him putting it, what it is is him putting Trey first. I, I yes, think. yes, um, and everything is downstream of that. Yeah, um, it, it it is like. It is exactly that it is, you know, it is a recreation of his thing with his daughter where his daughter gets mugged and he has to go out there. And the most important thing is finding the guy who did this and bringing the guy who did this to justice. And and basically what we're told at the end of this book is that's not actually the most important thing. The most important thing is making sure this kid is going to be OK and has the greatest chance of of not repeating the same things that happened to her brother. And, you know, for that, she needs stability. She needs someone there for her. And that's the other scene that really choked me up is when he does call his daughter and Mm -hmm. that that moment of, hey, I have this kid here um, and I need some help. And that that, like the the way Tana writes his daughter's switch to like go into work mode and 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 not just that, but Cal's shock and like 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 the, how impressed he is with that and like that that he's he's finally able to see his daughter as not this fragile little thing that he needs to protect from this cruel world but just a fully formed person that knows things and can take care of things and can solve problems and like like it, it's it's beautiful it's beautiful to see and it just makes you so happy like this is like this book kind of has a i wouldn't say a bummer ending but like it's a it's a melancholy ending right mm-hmm. like like this kid is dead um, the people that did it aren't going to face justice. Um, but it does have a hopeful bit of like, oh, he's he's managed to finally understand his daughter and his ex-wife in a way that he hadn't before. Um, he, there, there, there's there's hope for Trey as he's going to stick around and be there for this kid. There's also some kind of romantic hope for him and and the Lena character who we haven't really talked about very much. But like there's there the, the, the seeds of that uh blossoming relationship are laid there um and, and so it, it, we we leave it feeling pretty good and yeah. I, I like that that conversation with his daughter i was just i don't i don't, I don't it didn't affect me like that the first time i read it and maybe it's because i i wasn't wasn't a parent yet um but man yeah i thought that was great and just to speak of the ending overall and how things wrap up i really think tana is actually a master of endings mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I, i've always thought whether it's a good ending, like whether it's a happy ending or a sad ending, she knows exactly where the stakes are. She knows exactly what you care about and um, gives you just the perfect resolution for all those things. I, I still like, like probably my favorite ending of any of the books that we've read has been um, the secret place. And I'm not going to, not going to spoil it, but like it, it works for much the same reason that this ending works where, you like there's this specific moment where everything is kind of winding down and it's this kind of like like you said melancholy you're disappointed um obviously cal is is disappointed and kind of heartbroken about the whole situation and then mart is is i i I think i might be mangling some of these details but i think mart is like you know i think it's good for for a girl to have a, a a man around I think I think you should keep hanging out with her, and it's like this kind of, it's, it's sort of a peace offering, sort of an invitation to to be like, you know, we we do want you to be part of this community, and mm-hmm. I think I think people will turn will, will sort of uh, uh, just just not make a big deal out of it if you hang out with this teenage girl, and and that'll be fine, and then and then like and then you're so you're so happy because you're like, ah, that's great because you you know you thought he was gonna just be like. Um, you know, how am, how am I going to manage to to actually, you know, surrogate parent this child when the community obviously won't be behind that? And and then you realize like Mart is going to pull some strings and make that happen and it's all going to work out and you're kind of going to because that's what you want. You want to see you want to see Trey and, and Cal um, get to hang out and uh, him get to, you know, be a, be a good dad to her, basically. 
Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, it, it's it's what you want more than anything in the world, yeah. and and that the book gives it to us. I mean, that, that's like the thing that you're uncertain of in that ending is like what's going to happen. You know, is is Cal going to die? Is Trey going to die? Like, like uh, one thing we haven't talked about the the bog scene that I see people in chat were talking about here is the 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 low kind of continuous tension through the entire hike up the mountain that um, March just leading him to his death. Um, mm-hmm. which which Cal is worried about that we're worried about that we're uncertain if like this is all just a ruse to get him out in the middle of nowhere alone and then just take care of the problem right um yeah well I mean the the most likely ending that I was actually thinking was Mart will try to kill him mm-hmm. and not succeed because it's a book yeah and and but you know Cal will will cap will kill him basically and it'll be sort of a a real downer or, or yeah, like I, I couldn't see any way that he would that he would arrest Mart. Like that didn't make any sense at all. So I was like, he's yeah. probably gonna have to kill Mart. It's gonna be a tragedy, and the tragedy is actually that Mart, who, while he did, he he definitely did some bad stuff. He didn't mean to kill the kid. He's not a horrible monster, and uh, and, and it would be it would have been sad if Mart died, even even though you know he 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 did participate in killing the kid. So. Yeah. Oh, what a fascinating character is Mart. You yeah. know, like this is so much, so much going on with him. We barely scratched the surface of him, but like he's, he is, he is really, really interesting. And, and the, the, the ways in which he's threatening and the ways in which he's kind and lovable, like, I, you know, you, you already compared this to Duma Key, but like he is, we, we had a discussion question on that book last week of like, who is like the, that guy in the Stephen King books. And Mart is, is a, that guy, right? Yeah. He's like this, this random character who has all these weird sayings and, and turns of phrases that are, are ridiculous and goofy. And, and you, you kind of, you kind of love him, but also you're kind of wary of him. And, and yeah, he's, he's a, he's a perfect, that guy. And, yeah. uh, and yeah, you, you don't, you, you don't want to see him and, and Cal, at odds and i think that's that's one great thing about that that scene the scene where if it finally all is revealed and cal realizes how stupid he's been <laughs> um is like you don't want to see them at odds you, you don't yeah. Uh, yeah gosh that's that's one of the the things tana is is best at actually is having there be characters in the story who you desperately want to see get along and then creating like re, you know reasonable sources of tension in that relationship and um, I mean, that's just good character drama and, and so forth, but she yeah. just does it so well. Um, yeah, just just always, always being able to know how to take those those characters that you you we I've, I've created these two characters and you like them both and you want them to get along. But look how I'm going to put them in situations where their character flaws put them in direct conflict with each other. Like it's just it's just writing one on one stuff. But like yeah. she's just so good at it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, is, uh, uh, Mike brings up the, um, oh no, sorry. Heller brings up the, uh, the voice acting, which I, I did think it was great voice acting. The funny thing about the voice acting to me, I don't know this for a fact, but I suspect the voice actor is like of Irish origin, but the thing is his, his normal narration voice and his voice for Cal is mostly an American accent with a slight twinge, but then for the Irish characters, he would do a full Irish accent, but then he would have a really hard time switching back to the American accent after doing (laughs) the Irish accent. So there would be sections where Cal kind of has like a half Irish accent. Um, Not really, this didn't bother me. This wasn't like an obstacle in in enjoying the book or anything. I just thought it was funny because I can totally imagine having the same problem. If I were supposed to professionally narrate something, I would have the hardest time switching between accents. Mm -hmm. Um, it was fine though. Yeah, I, I, I've talked about this when we've covered Tana in the past, but a, a thing happens to me every time I read a Tana French book, which is I start thinking in an Irish accent. And, and <laughs> for the record, I I cannot do an Irish accent. I will not do an Irish accent, um, but my brain can. Uh-huh. And, and so in my my it my internal monologue in my head starts being Irish, and it not only like the accent, but doing all like the vocal ticks and things like like the the sure like. <laughs> you know uh-huh. uh ending sentences oh, sure. with yeah. yeah with stuff like that and uh-huh. it just like i it just i start doing it in my head and it takes about a week for that to to fade away um but it happens every time i read one of these books yeah that's that's funny because i'm not even sure that i've heard enough authentic irish dialect to correctly 
accent the the like ending sure mm-hmm. uh, uh, uh but but the the voice actor does it you know does know how to do that and so i feel like i learned something because there, there's a lot of dialect in the book really it's not just mm-hmm. it's not just um the sure is there's a lot of kind of unusual grammatical structures where you're like, I guess that is an Irish dialect type thing. That's interesting. She, she, yeah, she manages to, to always write it in a way that, that I think you can hear it in your head. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, and, and there's no, like, I, I never had a moment where I had to like go back and read a sentence. Cause I'm like, I'm not sure what you're, you're saying there. Yeah. Like just the use of the word yoke, which is like something they use for like a, a lot of things. Uh-huh. Um, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right, but uh, like it just it just felt natural. Yeah, I don't, I don't either. I literally don't <laughs> I don't remember. I'm probably pronouncing it pronouncing it wrong. Um, it's I mean it is an Irish slang. It's just like a thing, right? Um, I just don't know how it's pronounced. Your 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 confusion there makes me seem like it's I, it's pronounced differently. No, it could just be that I, I just forgot. I I, I don't remember. Um, you're probably right. It's probably just like, you know, yoke except said with a really heavy Irish accent, which would yeah. make the, the vowel sound a bit different. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I don't know, man. I, I just like revisiting this book. I loved it. I loved it. Like this is this is the thing that I always wonder about mystery stories is like, does does the does the book require a lack of knowledge of the mystery to function? And like that, that's not necessarily a ding on the book. Right. Because like the only thing that matters is the first time you read it really. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I'm always just very curious about that stuff. Cause there is, there is definite books that once, once the, the mystery is revealed, the story just doesn't function as well on you. And, and I've read a few Tana books over again for our, like when we did the likeness, that was the second time I had read that when we did this book, that was the second time I'd, I'd read this book. And the thing that I'm always kind of impressed about is that I think she, she crafts a story in such a way that it doesn't matter that I know the answers already. Like I just, I'm just enjoying seeing the characters go on their journeys. And it is like, it is primarily about the characters. Like these are mystery stories. Yes. But the mystery is always secondary to the character and what the character is going through. Um, yeah. And that is like, like give me a hundred scenes of Trey and Cal just like, sitting in his house fixing stuff up and chatting and i would be happy forever because Mm -hmm. like that that is that is the core that is the soul that is the heart of the book for me is is those moments and i loved him loved him she gives you that and then she threatens to take it away and that's that's uh yep it's good writing it is it is such good writing anything else uh, you wanted to say about this one i am happy with our conversation about the searcher yeah, I am too. Anything else, y- y'all in chat that we didn't cover? Um, we didn't talk about Lena, L- Lena, Lena. I don't know. I don't know. Irish. Yeah, I'm a quarter I'd, Irish. I'd, I should know this. I mean, she was a good supporting character. I, 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 I mean, there, there's definitely some gender uh, commentary happening in this book. Uh, you know, with Trey, obviously, with with Lena to some degree. Mm-hmm. With you know, sort sort of with Cal's attitude around gender specifically. Um, but we kind of kind of talked about that already yeah but i i enjoyed her i enjoyed her like as this kind of you're not going to be able to bullshit your way through her um and and yeah the the puppy side quest as as heller puts it was great um yeah yeah the pup the puppy was this like thermometer of character change yeah i love that yeah oh that's a good question would this book work as a movie um I think so i think it would so they have they did make a uh, Dublin Murder Squad TV series. I don't know if you knew this, Matt. Um, I knew I knew that they had made the uh, In the Woods miniseries, and I haven't watched it. Um, so th- <laughs> here's the problem: they didn't make In the Woods into a miniseries. They took In the Woods and they took the likeness uh-huh. and they shoved them together and made them happen at the same time, and they made that into a miniseries. Okay. So. It is a book that it is a series that is half about Rob Detective Rob Riley and the things he goes through in in the woods, and it is a book half about Detective Casey Maddox and the things that she goes through in the likeness, and it's almost like too too much. It's mm-hmm. there's too like I I understand why they did it because like you have these two characters and like uh, Cassie is is just not like she's a, an important part of in the woods, but like as a definite secondary character, and they like wanted to to spread it out i I don't think the television show works ultimately and only made it one season and then it was canceled 
Um, and also it didn't help that it was on yeah. the stars, which is not a thing that anyone owns. I mean, speaking of, of like the clarity of knowing where the stakes are, I don't see how you could possibly do that where the stakes of, of the relationship between the characters in, in the woods, like make it impossible to simultaneously have the stakes of what's happening in, um, the likeness yeah. it doesn't make any sense to me dramatically so for those that don't know and this won't be a spoiler the the conceit of the likeness is uh a, a a murdered body is found in an old house and the body looks exactly like detective casey maddox like almost like eerily exactly and and the plan is to find out who murdered her Casey Maddox is going to go undercover as this girl into the house that she lives with, with all her university friends and try to figure out which one of those university friends is responsible for murdering her while pretending to be this girl that she never met. And she had to learn about it's this, it's like, it's, it's a very kind of specific conceit uh -huh. um, that is not, that is, is pushing realism, but it's like a, it's like a really fun idea and there's so yeah. much innate drama and tension built into that idea. But the problem is it, it relies on, Casey Maddox being in a very specific place right. at the end of the story with her former partner Rob Riley in the right. first book and like it like yeah the, the trying to do those things at the same time like makes no sense yeah well it messes up yeah like you just said messes up her motivation so yeah yeah, yeah. I, I don't that that makes me even less interested in watching it <laughs> yeah I I, I I you like I I love this I love this writer and I love everything she does and I love these stories and and I I'm telling you right now, I would not recommend it okay. to, to anyone. So, all right. Uh, but to, to go back to the original question, I think not. A, we we need to move away from everything being a mini series or a show. Like, yes, this is a this is a, a contained story. It's a movie. Like, it's a it's a, a hundred hundred and ten minute movie would be perfect for the story. And I think they could do it. And I think you would capture the the beauty, but but eerie nature of the Irish countryside. And and I, I think I think you could do a really good job with this one if you wanted to. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, so I think I think we're going to move into what we're going to be covering next month. And I, I don't know how this is going to go over. Um, I had <laughs> I had a, a secret. Um, I had a secret plan all along here, folks. You you heard me mention that Tana French has a new book coming out next month. And <laughs> it's it's a we pick them. And so. Guess what? Guess what we're gonna do, folks? What are we gonna do, Scott? Next month we're gonna do another Tana French book. I'm so happy. And then I promise for those that like liked but didn't love Tana, um, this will probably be the last Tana French <laughs> we touch in a while. Yeah, um, at least three but, months. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but this is the next book. It comes out March the fifth. It is actually, folks, if you enjoyed the Searcher, it is a uh it is a direct sequel to the searcher so this is the story of the continuing adventures of cal lena and and uh and young trey as uh, as some stuff goes down in the town they live in so uh I, we all love these characters we wanted to see more of these characters uh miss french agreed with us on that one and she wanted to explore the characters a little bit more as well so obviously none of us have read it the book's not out yet it doesn't come out for four days but um i thought it'd be fun to do this and i, I was gonna abuse my uh my my theft of democracy to kind of manipulate you guys into letting me do a back-to-back -to -back ton of French. I think this will be fun because we've never done her, you know, as close together as this. And so we get this really opportunity to like talk about these books in comparison to each other and, 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 and like not just like ranking them against each other, but just like it's been four years since she wrote the last one. So has she changed as a writer? Like we, we get, um, we get uh, interesting. It's a uh, Matt will have to read. I I, I no, made the I assumption so. that these days the audiobooks came out day and date with the the yeah. written books, but yeah. I, maybe that's an incorrect yeah, I, assumption. I don't think I'll have to read. I don't think I'll have to read. <laughs> I, I I feel like the audiobook industry is such a good. It's such a big part of the publishing fiction now that I, I'm pretty sure they they have the audiobook ready to go the day the the book comes out, but maybe I'm wrong about that. I don't know. It says release date, March 5th. Okay, cool. So, so yeah, um, a, a little bit, a little bit, uh, a little bit of a different one for us. Um, 
Bishop, Bishop that, says they're, they're, they they uh, check their library. The, the library has nine copies on or, on order with thirty nine people on the wait list. Oh no! Oh no! I'm sorry, Bishop. Maybe you can. Uh, well, I, I don't know. I don't know how often they get in the in the digital co- um, copies, right? Because like I know like the, Libby exists where like you can rent, you know, ebook versions of books that come out. I don't I don't know how that works, but um, hopefully. This is, I mean, we've never done something like this. I thought it'd be fun to do a back-to-back uh, with an author. It's probably not something we'll do again, but I think if we're going to make an exception for anyone, it's going to be our, our girl, Tana French, who is the official uh, the official mascot of the Doof Media Book Club at this point. <laughs> That's true. I think we've still done more Brandon Sanderson books, um, but not for long. Not for long. <laughs> no. Uh, if you guys enjoyed enjoyed uh, the, the Searcher, um, you hopefully you'll read uh, the hunter along with us, but I, I urge you to go back and check those Dublin Murder Squad books as well. Um, no, they're they're fantastic. I love yeah, them. I love them as well. That is why we cover so many of her books on here, and mm-hmm. I will eventually finish all of them. Um, but uh, not I'm jealous. Yet. I'm jealous of you. I'm jealous of you. I know that's that's uh, that's because I'm so mentally strong to just not read the books that I should read. Uh, yes, it is called it is called the Hunter. Uh, here is it, it here it is right once again. Um, it will be our, out on the fifth of March, which is Tuesday, right? Yeah, Tuesday. So that will be officially out. Um, we will be making the formal post uh, as well, like we normally do. So you'll have all the information there on the website and on Reddit and all that stuff. But um, yeah, I think it's gonna be fun. It's it's kind of an experiment for us, you know, since it's I think it's the the newest book we've ever covered on the book club as covering it the month that it came out. Um, but uh, I think it'll be fun. I, yeah. I hope I hope it's a good one. I hope we enjoy it. I I, I have very little doubt that I will love this book because I'm like I'm gonna be honest here. I can't be objective about Tata French anymore. Like I just I, I I've I've never like outside of like Stephen King and like. Uh, George R. R. Martin there for a while. Like I've never met an author that just like completely like consumed me in a way that like I, I needed to put everything else aside and be like, I'm going to read all this stuff. That's the only thing I want to be reading until, until I've read it all. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. I, I, I mean, it's funny. I, I feel, I feel the same. I, I think I feel a little, a little different because her books don't go down smooth for me, right? <laughs> like, like the, yeah. even even this one, it, but but in a good way, right? It's like it's like, oh god, I got to recover I, after each of these. I have to recover. I will say this one, I I felt less of the need to recover, and so I'm perfectly happy to move on to the sequel. Um, and and it is a really fun idea that we get to um read a a, a brand new book. I don't, I can't think of any other time on the book club that we've really read a a brand spanking new book. We have to be on the on the on the leading edge of tackling this book with everybody else in, in the world at the same time yeah we did um we did like uh, we had a, a months where like the, the the december books the december vote was all books that came out that year so like it was a new in that year book but yeah never like this is the month the book came out but we're going to be reading it for the book club along with everyone else is going to be reading this book we've never done that so, yeah yeah really fun and and folks, I we saw people. I think I think it was it was John asking in uh in Discord earlier this week if if we're gonna let Brandon Sanderson out of out of Doof Jail, um, <laughs> which we never technically put him in, in 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 jail. We just had covered a lot of Brandon Sanderson, and we were like, maybe let's like every time we put a Brandon Sanderson book in the vote, it wins the vote, and so like every time we pick it, we basically pick it knowing that okay, we've just basically selected the book for the month because yeah. it's going to win the vote so uh, i'm not saying we'll never do another brandon sanderson book i do i do want to finish the stormlight archive series eventually um I'm, I'm not in a huge rush to do that though yeah right i think a lot of it for me just has to do with like i spent like the first two and a half decades of my right of my life reading like high fantasy like reading a really disproportionate amount of fantasy yeah and I obviously I, I like fantasy, um, but I I'm now in a point in my life where I just want to read for variety. I want to read a bunch of different authors, a bunch of different genres, and the idea that we're just going to read like oh, there's more popular high fantasy again, or maybe not high fantasy, whatever subgenre of fantasy. I'm like, yeah, okay. 
<laughs> it doesn't excite me the way it would have when I was younger. And that that's just me. This is just me personally in my you know history. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. Uh, you also irrationally hate him because of what he did to your poor wheel of time. That's true. That's true. <laughs> we just need to put that disclaimer up there for everyone. Yep. I do irrationally hate him for <laughs> for finishing the wheel of time as best he could. <laughs> oh, gosh, Mike. I'm going to be entirely honest with you. Like, we are not the people to sell Sanderson to you. Like, I think we both enjoy his work, but we also have a lot of mixed feelings about it. So I, I, we have plenty of, of Sanderson people that are listeners that I think could do a much better job at, at selling him uh, to you than, than we could. Like, I, I kind of feel like damning with faint praise yeah. a little bit. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I have, I have enjoyed all the books we've covered. How many have we done? We've did, we did three Mistborns. We did the first two Stormlights. And then I think we did two one-off books or just one one-off book. We did Warbreaker. Did we do the first two Stormlights? We did. Yeah, we did. Jeez, that's a lot more Sanderson <laughs> than I even realized. <laughs> so, yeah, I think it's at six or seven Sanderson books. Yeah. So Tana's got some catching up to do. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. I mean, the reason we do them is is because they're they're popular, right? Um, yeah, we they did are. do Warbreaker and Emperor Soul. You're right. So that is seven. That is seven. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're popular. People like them. And even though I, I feel like the, those book club episodes more than anything are people getting mad at us. Yeah. But, for not liking it enough. Yeah. Not even, not even disliking it. Just like, yeah, it was all right. Yeah. Anyway. Remember that, remember that article about Brandon Sanderson that came out? Was it last year? Uh, yeah. That was so, so mean. Like I, I like I, uh, it was so mean. I was like, I was reading this article. I was like, Jesus Christ, yeah, dude. Right. Like, what is uh, wrong with you? I have my complaints about saying it. What was funny was the article was so bad that like everyone on the entire internet, no matter their opinion of Sanderson was like, <laughs> fuck you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it starts off like he makes some comments about like some of the flaws in Sanderson's writing. And I was like, yeah, I could see that. I could see that. And then he gets like super personal. Uh-huh. I wish I had a link to this article so the people listening could know what the fuck we're talking about. Yeah. But I was just like, holy shit, yeah, man. You, you don't have to make fun of the guy's clothes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jesus Christ. I don't know what Sanderson did to this guy. But yeah. yeah. Seriously. That was. I think it, was, was it struck me as jealousy, to be honest. Yeah. It, struck, it struck me as like this guy. How come this guy gets to be successful yeah. and popular? He, he doesn't deserve. Yeah. He doesn't deserve um, that success because he's not a good writer. Yeah, in my opinion, blah, he's, blah, he's blah, not blah, the yeah. kind of writer that I think is a good writer. Yeah, right. right. Yeah, yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, yeah, I'm I'm currently in the middle of the three hour contrapoints video on Twilight that came out today. So oh, goodness, my- so you, you can whether or not whether or not the writing or prose is good is is very irrelevant to me in in fun discussions of of books and stories that's fair three hours matt she made a three hour video about twilight she knows how to make content modern youtube essays have just gotten out of control i mean i love contrapoints but three hours yeah it's like that's like the minimum time for a modern youtube essay really yeah yeah Uh, all right, folks. I think that's going to do it for us. Thank you, everyone, for hanging out. This was good. Like I always love talking Tana. Um, I just need to start a podcast called Talking Tana. Yep. Let's she's she's like honestly like there's a lot of authors that I like dream about interviewing. Obviously Stephen King, right? Um, uh-huh. Ta- Tana French is up there for me. Like and and like with with Stephen King, I'm like I have in my mind like fi- five hundred specific questions I would ask him. Uh, with Tana, I don't even know anything i would ask i just kind of want to want to hear her talk about her process and like how she write like i just want to i haven't listened to any interviews with her either i just want to hear her talk yeah yeah me too it's funny i don't have any specific questions for her either because i feel like i understand why her books work Mm -hmm. so it's not like i'm going to ask like how do you do it i'm like no no it's (laughs) it's just extreme competence is what it is it's not yeah uh yeah that's where do you get your ideas from (laughs) well there's a murder and uh yeah let me let just if, if any of you out there ever get the chance to interview an author that is the that's the worst possible question you could ask them yeah they're not I mean, going to give you an answer you want it's really hard it, it's funny we are thinking about this because of the other book we're reading but like mm-hmm. interviewing artists about their art is usually disappointing <laughs> you know because they're yeah you usually they're like look i can't really explain it to you but i'm going to try and it's not going to be correct explanation and then we're both going to be disappointed um 
Yeah. 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 All right. So more Tana next month. I can't wait. Uh, I'm going to go right out and pick this book up the second it, it, it releases. Um, yep. Oh, so good. Um, yep. all right. So thank you. Thanks again, everyone. Uh, we kind of rambled on there at the end, but that's okay. Um, if, if you are listening to this, if you're listening to the audio after the fact, I hope you will consider coming to hang out next month. I know I realize we've set something up where if, if, if you, for some reason, didn't read the searcher, you now have to read two books before uh the end of the month which is a little bit more of an ask but i think these books are pretty fast reads and they're not too long they're like 400 pages so that's not insane um so hopefully hopefully you'll be able to do that uh so we hope you read the book and consider coming and hanging out with us yeah and if you liked what we do here at doof media and you want to see more of it then please head on over to our patreon at patreon.com slash doof media and consider donating to support our organization uh, any available level, you'll, you'll get access to the ability to vote for uh, books on the book club, um, except on months like this one. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and then uh, you can, well, you can come hang out with us anyway, but um, yeah, yeah. you can hang out with us over on the Discord too, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And, uh, and, and if you really, really, really want us to cover more Sanderson, you just got to keep submitting those books via yeah. our submission form because we do when we when we, we look at which books we're going to pull like the ones that have multiple 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 entries now i'm not telling one person to submit something multiple times I'm telling each individual person if we have individual submissions from individual people that are the same book we're like oh the 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 listeners really want us to cover this book yeah. and that's when we're much more likely to put it up for nomination right. and, and obviously in your description of the book you should emphasize any similarities to the Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Uh-huh, um, uh-huh. Or, Dark Tower. or the Dark Tower. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Know, know your audience, folks. Come or or Piranesi. If it's, it's really, if it's like Piranesi, yeah. Matt will uh, read right. it. Just, just to describe every book you submit from now on as Piranesi like. Yeah. <laughs> how so exactly? <laughs> well, th- well, there is a house. Yeah. So. Is it, there's I... a. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, y'all have a nice night. Have a good weekend, and we will see you next month.